Hello to all, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Demystifying MPS, brought to you by Clover Imaging Group. My name is Tim Cahill. I'm the Director of Sales with Clover, and I'll be your host today. Before I introduce our presenters, I would like to review a few quick housekeeping notes. All of our attendees today are in listen-only mode, so if you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A section at the bottom of your Zoom screen. We will do our best to answer these live as time allows, uh, but some may be answered with a text response. In those instances, once a question is answered, the question and its respective answer will become visible to all of our audience members. If we are unable to answer your question live, we will follow up individually after this meeting via email. Also, this webinar is being recorded, so if you have a hard stop or if anyone in your organization is unable to attend today, we will be providing you with a full presentation recording via our website. If you have missed any of our webinars, the recordings are available to view at any time on your dashboard of the cloverimaging.com website. While I introduce pre today's presenters, uh, please take a moment to answer our three poll questions from our presenters or for our presenters to learn a little bit more about your organization's engagement with MPS. Today's presenters, we've got the Senior Vice President of Sales for Clover Imaging Group, AJ Brad. We have the CEO of Modern Sales Training, Derek Chevy, and the President of NSC Diversified, Bill Adams. Thank you again for spending some time with us today, and I will turn it over to our first presenter, AJ Brazel. Good afternoon to everybody, and thank you, Tim, for the introduction. I appreciate everybody uh, jumping on this webinar this afternoon. I know we've had quite a few of these in the past. Um, they are all available if you want to go back historically and look at some of the content we've presented in the past. Um, but specific to today's webinar, um, this is something that is very near and dear to myself and the other presenters. Um, and it's why is MPS going to be not only a viable diversification um, strategy for you moving forward, but why it's also going to be a lot easier for you to go out and win net new business utilizing MPS here in the future after working with some of the individuals on this call. So we've talked to quite a few dealers over the last two years since COVID, and everybody out there has consistently come to us with the fact that they're looking to diversify their portfolio of offerings and solutions out to the market. It's no secret that everybody's lost some business over the course of time because people just aren't printing like they were printing years ago. And there's an opportunity for everybody to look at new revenue streams in order to get their dealership back on a growth trajectory. But a lot of dealers have kind of bypassed MPS as a diversification platform. And why are we excited about it today? Why do we want you guys to adopt and start utilizing it a little bit more effectively out in the field? Well, it's easy. I mean, you can see these bullet points. The first is that according to some market research, and, and uh, we had put the slide out there and uh, from the, the research that we've done and, and some of the, the industry articles that are out there, MPS projections are looking like it's going to be about $91.5 billion by 2031, which is an extremely massive number. There's growth in this category and there's opportunity out there for all of the dealers that are on this call. But furthermore, the big reason that I think a lot of you have got interest and are here today is because we've all seen that A3 pages continue to decline in this industry. You can see this quote from the IDC. I'm not going to go over it verbatim, but long story short is that there is a shift in the market from A3 machines to A4 hardware in terms of the total printed pages that are out there at your customers' environments. Could be due to a multitude, it could be due to a multitude of reasons. It might be because they've got more people at home might be because they don't need to print 11 by 17 anymore, may just be that they've got a reduced labor force in their um, office building, so they don't need to have the large copier in there. But whatever it is, it's, cause, you know, it's causing it is, is happening. A4 is starting to take a stronger presence in most of your customers' environments. And the biggest growth opportunity for all of us in an industry that might be you know, seeing a little bit of decline is A4 color laser. A lot of people are buying when they buy new products or buy new hardware, they're looking at A4 color laser. And so that creates more of an opportunity to sell MPS into certain environments. But outside of just industry statistics, everybody can agree that net new business is extremely scarce. It's hard to come by. You've got reps that are all competing against your competitors' reps for less pages. Everybody lost a little bit um, through COVID. And so they're getting aggressive and going out in the field and trying to win new business at new end users. But because people have started to, you know, we've had a reduced labor count in a lot of these customers, 
And because the, people are doing more with less, there's just not as much of an appetite to bring in a new vendor right now. People are, you know, don't have the bandwidth to entertain a new proposal. And so bringing on a new customer is less, um, it, it's less effective right now and it's more expensive for all of you. So why are we looking at new business or why aren't we looking at new business within current customers? We've got a lot of dealers that have told us that they've got massive amount of opportunity within their current customer base. They've got reps that have sold an A3 device and a copy release but they've bypassed all of the A4 models within that environment. There's a big opportunity for your reps to go out and make a ton of money, but also for you as a dealer owner to make a lot of money as well, increase profitability and grow top line sales within your current book of business. But um, additional to that, additionally to that, customers, your customers are looking to save money. I don't know if everybody's out there that's up in the air on whether or not we're going into a recession, but there's um, you know, some economic um, situations right now that are making people a little bit less um, bullish on spending money long-term. So customers are looking to save money. And not only are they looking to save money, they're looking to retain their hardware longer. They don't want to make the capital investment on bringing on net new bit or a bunch of new machines if they don't have to. And many of them don't have to because they've been printing or they were not in the office for two years through COVID and they weren't printing on the hardware they've got. So there's no need to put a new fleet into a lot of environments. So dealers that are having success are focusing on fleet takeovers and doing what's right by their customer. They may replace one or two machines, but doing a full refresh is not needed. And it's if you go in with a takeover strategy, you're going to differentiate yourself and do what's right by the customer, create longer lasting in, um, relationships with your, with your, your new business. The big thing that I want to get through to everybody is that MPS is seamless. It fits in with your current business model. Everybody here send, sells print in some capacity. And like I said before, a lot of you have reps that are familiar with selling copiers. So the leap from selling a copier to selling MPS is small compared to the leap from selling a copier to get a, one of those reps to start selling managed IT or VoIP or office furniture or whatever it may be. They already know the jargon. They have the contacts that make those environment or those decisions. This, the, the, the transition or the bolt-on sale there is so much easier for a rep to get their arms around than trying to create a new relationship within an organization and selling something like managed IT. Managed IT, VoIP, office furniture, all great diversification strategies, but there's more investment and more time that's going to go into uh, being successful in those categories than there would be an MPS. And the last thing, and, and many of you who have talked to me in the past or are aware of, uh, of you know, our talk track at Clover, have talked to the reps, know that we are passionate about this last bullet because I think it may be the most important, is that NPS is the best way to in control an entire print environment and keep your competitors out of your customer. If you went in and sold an A3 copier on a lease and you did not take over the printers within that organization, Somebody else is going to take those printers, they're going to sell them MPS, and they're going to wait until either your copy release is up and say, why are you splitting your bill up? Or they're going to wait until you have a minor service issue, and they're going to come in and say, listen, I can do all this better, and they're going to take over that environment. So taking using MPS on your current book of business is going to keep competitors out of your environments. It's going to allow you to grow top line sales. You're going to have longer lasting, better customer relationships and you're going to be more successful in the long run. So seems like easy. So on the next slide, why are we not doing it from an organizational standpoint right now? Why are our reps not out there selling um, MPS? One is the lack of sales rep interest and focus. That's the number one thing we get from our dealers when we talk is it's not a big enough financial impact for them. They've been you know, they've raised, they've been raised in their career to sell big copiers and they get paid very well for doing it. So why would they go and sell MPS, especially in these smaller opportunities where a lot of dealers don't have the right um, comp program in place in order to make them successful and make them more money. But that ties in also the fact that they probably lack the confidence or the knowledge and they don't want to learn something. Reps inherently in our industry and in every industry go to where the least, they go to the least the path of least resistance, what they know. They're going to constantly go back to selling 
the things that have gotten them to the place that they're in today. So we've got reps that are out there. They know the copier industry really well, but they don't feel confident in selling MPS. So that's one. The second is they don't have a lot of dealers say, I don't have the structure to support a program. They don't have the software set up. They don't have the personnel. They don't have somebody with the expertise that if a rep brings them back a deal, they look at that deal and they say, all right, this is my burden rate. This is where the CPP of these machines are. This machine's a dog. I need to get this out of there. Let's put this. They don't have that, that knowledge base. So the personnel and the software are holding a lot of dealers back. And then the last and the thing that I think may be the biggest reason that we have not seen success out in the field is that there is an age old adage that MPS is this horrifying strategy that it takes time. You have to go after the big complex deals. You can't make it simple. That's not the case. Every one here should know that MPS should be a simple process. Your reps should be confident and able to sell it quickly. You should be turning over deals constantly. We see a lot of people and the poll shows that one to 10% of your rep sales based on the feedback that we're getting is net new business. So they're not going out and looking for opportunities. This MPS strategy should be a way to pump that number up to 50 to 60 to 70%. You want your salespeople selling. So how are we gonna kind of go over that? And next slide shows that is the, the things that we're gonna go over today. And, and, and I'm excited to hear uh, Derek and Bill talk because Derek is gonna cover how to simplify the process, how to make it easy, getting your tra reps trained, feeling confident and aggressive and excited about selling this. Then from there, we're gonna go in and talk to those dealers that don't have the solution or the process in place to set up and, and, and start to effectively run MPS platform because he's got a turnkey solution through his company, NSC, where he's worked with dealers to be successful out in the field as well. And he can help you guys get MPS deals. Once you get them closed, he can help you get them uh, or keep them running effectively and profitably. And then the last thing, and I'll, I'll finish it up with support through Clover, why you should be selecting Clover as your partner to grow in this category, what we can do after we sell you that toner cartridge, and what we want to do to help your reps get excited and make more money out in the field. So that's the the you know that's kind of the the structure we're going to go from here. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Derek uh, from Modern Sales Training, and he's going to go over his uh, um, training platform. So Derek, over to you. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much, AJ, and and really excited to be able to speak to all of you today. You know, I've I've already noticed in the participant list that um, I've been working with some of you. So it's so it's nice to see you on here and us continuing to, to attack this MPS market. So I thought I'd start off really quick, tell you guys a little bit about my background and, and uh, I may be a new face to a lot of you, but I'm not new to the industry. Um, I, I work for a, a Xerox dealership out of California. Uh, we were I, I was employee number 30 back in 2003 when I started. Uh, and when I left, we'd, we had over 500 employees. Uh, we were actually acquired by Global Imaging Systems. And uh, we were a $200 million company for them, the largest dealer uh, in this industry in California, too, by the way. Uh, we had 120 sales reps. Uh, we had a dozen MPS specialists, a dozen production specialists, solution specialists, and MIT specialists. Those are the main areas that we focused. And, you know, we as a senior leadership team were always trying to do better. And the, the place that we focused on probably more than anything was MPS because we looked at it and we said, uh, we know we can be writing more deals every single month. Like we know it. And our president used to always tell us, he said, Hey, look, we're, we're the MPS deals. You don't have to be good to sell MPS. That's what he used to tell us. Um, but I looked at some of your guys' answers on how many MPS contracts are sold by each of your reps. And uh, it, it reminds me of when I, I spoke to a, um, a VP of sales for one of the dealers about MPS uh, early on this year. And I said, so how's it going with MPS? And they, they said, we're doing great. And I said, Oh, oh great. Well, how many deals have you guys been writing? He's like, we've, you know, I've been writing deals. And I said, well, how many reps do you have? He says, oh, we've got, uh, we got six reps. I said, perfect. Um, how many, how many MPS deals did you write last year? And, um, and I'm thinking if he did good, maybe he's writing, you know, three deals a month per rep, right? That'd be good. And uh, he said, no, uh, we wrote uh, two deals last year. And I said, okay, well, who wrote those deals? And he said, well, I did. I said, so, so your reps, you know, are they writing MPS? And he goes, well, not really. 
And I said, well, that's why we should be talking. So I, I know what you guys are going through with this. And and because uh, we were doing the same thing. If we were writing 300 deals a month, you know, across California, we uh, we we were looking at it saying what percentage of those deals had MPS included. And uh, that's what I'd offer up for you to look at too, for your deals, for your dealership and saying, we wrote this many deals on average per month. How many of them include the printers? And, and that's really the low hanging fruit for your, for your dealership. Well, we found that there were three main challenges that we, we had to try to find a way to solve at our dealership if we were gonna, if we were gonna uh, figure out a way to crack an MPS. And the first one was that, you know, the obvious is that it's just so complicated. And many of you might have an MPS specialist on your, uh, you know, in your payroll right now. And they're there because it's complicated, because there's 150 steps to get it done, right? There's so many things you have to follow and, and you got to follow these things in order. And if you skip steps, you're not going to win the deal, right? Especially you're not going to win the deal against a, a big player out there. But uh, we were looking at it too, saying, if we're going to get all of our reps to sell us on a regular basis, they needed, we needed to find a way to make it less complicated. Um, along these lines, you know, we we had a, a, a budget for each of our reps for MPS, and it was $350 per month. So it doesn't matter who the rep was or what, what they did for the company. They had their equipment budget, and then they had a $350 per month MPS budget per month. And it's interesting. I heard I heard uh, the president, uh, CEO of POA, uh, talk earlier on this year. He was at a conference, and he was on a rant, and, and I was listening to this rant, and he said, I don't know why people aren't selling more MPS. We sell it all the time. All of our reps, they have a budget for MPS. They all do, every month. They have to do it because it's everywhere. And he's doing this rant. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, we did too. But uh, I've been working with uh, many of you and dealerships all across the country uh, last few years, and, and I'm, I'm always surprised to see how that isn't the case. And, and so we so they figured out something that we figured out on how to sell MPS. But the first thing is, how do you make it less complicated? And so we, we racked our brains trying to do that. But then we ran into the second challenge because it could be less complicated, but it still is a long process. And how are you going to get your office equipment salespeople to, to slow down the sales cycle to capture these printers when they're going like, look, it's probably a small deal. I mean, I was trained to look at these deals as being this size account or whatever, and this doesn't look like it's worth it. I don't know. It's too, it's too challenging. I'm just going to skip it and get the hardware. And so that's what they do. And so we did this. We, we, we saw the same thing. How do we find a way to do it fast? Along these lines, by the way, along the ways to do it fast, I worked with the dealer uh, in 20, 2021. So just um, uh, last year, not even a full year ago, but I helped this dealer in two weeks. And this is the president of a dealership in uh, Fresno. I helped that this dealer uh, close a $6,000 a month MPS contract at a net new account, $6,000 a month. And it was 4,000 a month in profit for his dealership. Um, and this was that not even a year ago. <laughs> this, this business is everywhere. It's so easy to get. But it's because of what I learned from our, our dealership and, and experimenting across California that I knew what to do. But that was the second thing we tried to accomplish. How do we get, how do we find a way to do it fast? And then the last the way, the thing, the big challenge that we that we run into is okay, great, we're getting more people doing it, but how do we get full participation? Because we had 120 sales reps. That were writing, you know, minimum three deals a month is what we were looking for, and we expected them to write MPS with it every month, without specialists. And so, what ended up happening is we found a way to do this, and uh, I ended up doing a um, a webinar for this for the BTA uh, last year after I got the six thousand dollar month deal, and I was like, wow, I, you guys aren't all doing this? Okay, let's, let me tell you how I did this. And so, I went on a high level in this in this webinar, and a lot of dealers reached out to me and said, hey could you put this in a workshop and help our people get good at it? And I said, sure. So I created the MPS acceleration workshop with the purpose of solving these three things right here on the left with making sure our salespeople that have been doing it for 15, 20 years, whatever they would go, Oh, you know what? That's how I do this. Got it. It makes sense to me now. I've been trained for years on it, but now I get it. And so that's the workshop that I made. How do you get full participation and so I, so Clover told me, I, I went to them, I said, Hey, would you be willing to sponsor this thing? And they said, they said, Derek, you know, you know, no, uh, no disrespect, but we don't really know you. I know you were at this big dealership. Sure. Great. But we got to test you out before we do anything like this. And I said, sure. So I got about uh, 10 dealers from the select dealer group 
and uh, and they um, and they said, yeah, we'll 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 test out this guy's process and and uh, and it, by the way, it's when I say my my process, it's not, it's just what we were doing, and it's it's probably what POA is doing too, based upon how the CEO was talking. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I did this workshop for this group of ten dealers in January, and um, the workshop ended up being so successful in doing just this, solving these three problems these three challenges that uh, it, it ended up being so great that that Clover said, okay, we'll go, we'll become a full sponsor for this workshop. Um, and before I tell you about how the workshop is, what, what's, what is a uh, part of the workshop, I just want to give you a, a quick testimonial from one of the people in this workshop. This is Brantley Fowler from, from Zeno office in, uh, in Texas. So many of you might know him. He's an, he's an executive VP out there. He, he joined one of the first workshops in January. And uh, the day after the workshop, he called me and left a voicemail and he texted me too a bunch of times. And you'll see the text messages pop up on the screen here too that he, that he texted me. But um, I just put the voicemail on top of his picture uh, to make it you know, a little bit better for a testimonial. But everyone listen just for, just, just for a minute to hear what he said uh, from a success that he had right after the workshop. So here he is. Hey, Derek, it's Brantley. Hey, just wanted to give you a little success story. Uh, just was visiting with a customer uh, who was wanting to switch out their copier with us or, or MFPs. Uh, as we were talking through that, we started talking about the printers and uh, went to some challenge questions, business impacts, and those uh, what do you, spot questions or, you know, those things we went through in that training. Uh, ended up at uh, five color printers and with a pretty decent amount of volume and so we're going to add uh, a pretty significant amount of money to the bottom line uh, with some mps thanks to your training so i just want to give you a success story let you know that had already happened we didn't waste any time we're going to see uh, how many dollars we can bring hopefully we can give you some more stories of success thanks man yeah so you see his text message right there that he had right there said that one deal the first deal the next day he said, paid for the workshop itself many times over. And he's, he's saying this works great. I, he was surprised. And he, more of his text messages were about how, you know, it's, it's, uh, he's very thankful that he attended this sort of thing because what could be new? Hey, what could be new for MPS? People have been doing it forever. We've had it on our website forever. Well, he wasn't this successful until the, you know, this workshop that we did. But that's where it started. Let's see what he said after that. Because I, uh, I texted him two weeks later. I'm like, hey, Brantley, how's it going? And this right here that you're looking at is an actual screenshot of a text message that I had with Brantley. You'll see right there, Brantley. That's his, that's, I don't have his number on there. I don't know if you guys all have his number, but you can, you can always look him up. But I said, hey, what's up, man? How's it going? And he knows I'm asking about MPS. And he said, hey, brother, it's going very well. We are crushing MPS. $3,950 net new so far in MPS uh, in February. That's after two weeks. He said, that's monthly reoccurring. So if you did this, and I, I obviously talk about doing it in a 36-month term. So if you just do the math, uh, $4,000 a month times 36 is $177,000. In the way that I taught the, everyone to do it in the workshop, there's there's minimum 70% uh, profit in these numbers. So looking at that, just in two weeks, he added $100,000 uh, profit to the bottom line for his, his dealership in Texas. So he's pretty pumped. But I said, unreal. And he said, yeah, that's monthly reoccurring. So he's really excited about it. He says another 5,000 per month in net new and op opportunities in the hopper and we're having fun. So that was after two weeks. Nice. Yeah, I expected that. And yeah, that's what, you, that's what everyone should be doing after the workshop. It's not like this wasn't just a fun thing. This was the workshop is designed for results because it's what we did. Nothing's theory about it. Okay, so then the next, so I had someone else from this workshop, Amin right here. He's from Nauticon. He's a VP of, solutions out there. He was also in the same workshop and he texted me the next day and he, his text message first said, Hey, I think I got the first deal of the group because he wanted to be the first person to close the deal. And he sent me this. He's like, Derek, I just added four brother printers. He, that's the DocuSign that he sent me, by the way, of the deal that he got. He said, this took me two minutes. I just got just a little MPS deals, a thousand dollars per month at monthly reoccurring. So he was like, thanks. Appreciate that. But, um, but look, there's so many stories like this that, that have been out there because I've done this for about 30 dealers since. And of course, it's because of results and the actual results and the ROI from this sort of thing, which is 
just doesn't take long to get in the workshop. Um, uh, Clover agreed to say, we'll do this thing for you guys, you know, with, with you together. So they're, they're my partner in this. Uh, but what, what does this workshop entail? So I'll talk about that next. There's four parts of the workshop. Because um, I'm so confident that you guys are going to get ROI, you'll see that I put so much into it to make sure you get that, you finally get that transformation that you've been you've been looking for forever with MPS. Because just like you, we were trying to figure it out, and we did. So the first thing is there's a sales leaders prep meeting because you and I need to sit down, and maybe someone in your operations, your president, or whoever else, uh, whoever else that runs the organization, we need to talk about the back end. Like, what are the things you need to have in place in order to do this thing fast? Because these deals can take minutes, as you just saw, you know, or a day, if you saw, it doesn't need to take long, um, but we need to talk about that. So we'll have a meeting that, we'll, that you and I will meet, and we'll talk about those details, what needs to be set up in the back end. The second part of the engagement is, uh, is the workshop itself. And the workshop itself is, is between five to 10 people at a time, um, because uh, there's a lot of role play, a lot of participation. I want to make sure that every single person gets it by the end. Uh, and so for a lot of the dealers that I've been working with this year is they've been, okay, let's start with these two teams because that, that'll be 10. And then we'll do this, these teams later on and we'll do these teams later on. And so these things are scheduled out. Um, now, sales leaders, by the way, are included in that workshop. So if you're a sales manager or you're a VP and you go out in the field, yeah, you're part of the workshop. So I'm, I'm counting you as an attendee. You should be an attendee because you should be out there selling it. If we think back to my old president, he says, Derek, you don't need to be good to sell MPS. Where are the MPS deals? Yeah, you should be leading from example, just like Brantley and Amin, right? So that's the second part. The third part of the engagement is I give you guys access to this, this MPS portal that I update. And I put templates in there that you can use that we were using and, and that, that you can do these deals fast with, that your people can do really fast. Um, there's, there's questions asked to get people interested in talking about MPS with you. There's objection handle, common objections you got to deal with. There's marketing collaterals, example proposals, it's all there. And so you get access. Whoever is, attends the workshop gets access to this portal and it's, they get it forever. Um, and then the fourth engagement, which I said is why I'm so confident behind this is you get me, I'm going to stick around. So I'm going to stick around on a monthly basis. You know, I'm going to check in with you. I'm going to say, how's it going? And you're going to say, well, Derek, you know, it's going great. If it's going great, like Brantley or Amin, you'll be saying, it's awesome. We're doing unbelievable. This is, thank you. And you're like, hey, Derek, I, I appreciate you, you, you checking in, but we kind of got this. Well, if that's the case, cool, I'm, I'm backing off. But if, you're the, if your dealership is taking time more longer to get this down and it's just for whatever reason, you guys need some more support, I'm there. I'm going to stick with you guys. I'm going to follow up with you guys monthly. And if there's something else that we need to do, if we need to do a follow-up training or whatever, we'll do it. And it's all going to be included in, in, your, in, your, in your original investment for this. So those are the four pieces of the MPS workshop, the prep meeting where we talk about how to do it fast and get that set up beforehand, the workshop itself, the MPS portal, and then the, the ongoing follow-up for ROI. So that's what we put together. And it's, it's, um, it's, this is something that you don't need to go so far off of your normal product lines to, to get that reoccurring revenue stream. It's right here. I mean, these deals are just so easy to get and there's stupid money in them. And we'll talk about that. I'll help you make sure I'll be there right there with you to get that. Now, if you don't want to go and do all the back end yourself and, and, and make sure you can support it and everything, you know, like, like I'll, I'll help you do, I'll, I'll give you recommendations on how to do in our prep meetings. Um, you, you guys are lucky because there's a really, really great partner that Clover has and that's NSC. And, uh, and the leader of the NSC team is uh, Bill Adams. And uh, we got him on here to talk a little bit more about how he can be that extra piece to make it even easier for you to get into this MPS program. So I'm gonna turn it over to Bill. Thanks, Derek, appreciate that. Good afternoon, everybody. So we've already learned about the why and the importance of MPS and Derek did a great job of, of laying out how we can make that sales process work for you. Um, the next big piece to MPS though is, is how do we manage it? You know, when you sell an A3 machine and you set it on the floor at your customer site, three years, five years later, it's still going to be sitting in that exact same location. A4s and printers don't work that way. They move around. Some of them move around a lot. So you have to have an infrastructure in place so you can keep track of them. You can take care of the moves, ads, and changes if you're auto shipping toner to them and manage the entire process that goes around MPS. 
And before I get into some specifics about how we do that, I would just like to reiterate a couple of points that have already been made. So AJ brought up that if you're just focused on the copier fleet, you're walking away from a huge opportunity within your customer base. But more importantly, you could be putting that customer at risk and eventually walking away from that customer. At NSC, we've been doing managed print for a long time. Our sales process and our go-to-market strategy has always been, let's go take over the printers, and then we can absorb the copiers as that printer contract and MPS contract evolves. You guys do a great job at creating an environment with the copiers that the lease is never in. It's very difficult to take over those copier contracts, but it's really easy to take over the printers if nobody's managing them and then letting the copiers come right to us. As we've already proven ourselves with the printer and the A4 side, it just makes sense for us to take over the copiers and be that one-stop shop for our customers. Mm -hmm. So that's why MPS is so important and should be important to your business. In 2020, when the pandemic hit, Clover and NSC Diversified sat down and said, hey, we've got to come up with a better way for your dealers to go to market and to make money to support those dealerships and keep those businesses profitable. Because coming out of the pandemic, as AJ already said, net new hardware was not going to be the avenue to generate new revenue. It's MPS. Now, we've talked a lot about MPS is complicated, right? We're going to simplify that for you. Getting the infrastructure to support MPS is costly. It's two or three FTEs to start. Maybe even before you have any MPS deals, you have to put that infrastructure in place. So you're spending money without making money. Plus the knowledge base is hard to come by. As you all know right now, what's the most one of the most difficult challenges facing your companies? It's finding quality candidates to come in and fill the open roles. With the partnership between Clover and NSC Diversified, you don't have to do any of that. That infrastructure is right here waiting for you. NSC can take on your MPS deals cradle to grave. We can give you 100% of the support as needed. Your salespeople can go out, find an opportunity, send us a device list. If hopefully because you're already in there, you've got some historical usage behind those devices. We can create CPI cost for you. We can let you know how to sell the deal, what your margins can be, what you should market up based on where you are in the United States and what the market will bear for monocolor rates in that particular area. We can do all of the data collection for you. We can auto ship the toner directly to those customers. We can handle 100% of the service. We have a couple of different companies that we work with that give us a national presence from a service perspective. Or if you want to provide the service and you just want us to manage the MPS infrastructure, we can do that. One of the great things about the way we're going to market with Clover is we don't want any one customer to be that square peg in the round hole. So we're going to create an environment or create a deal that works best for your dealership. So again, if you have technicians and you want to service those particular deals in the market, but you don't have the infrastructure to monitor the devices on a daily basis, handle moves, adds, changes, auto ship the toner, make sure service is dispatched in a timely manner, we can handle all of that for you. We can do the monthly billing. We can bill direct to your customer. And then when your customer pays us, pay you whatever we agreed on, or we send that bill to you. You bill the customer, you get the revenue into your business so you can pay your reps off of that revenue and you just mark it up. And again, you sell it directly to your customer, but your cost for the entire deal is just what your compensation is on the reps and that back-end billing. And I know a lot of people say, well, every time we send out an invoice, it's 125 bucks or whatever the case may be. I like to look at things in a much more practical view and say, I've got all these people sitting here. I'm paying them whether they're sending an invoice out or not. So literally those costs to you and those costs to us are zero. It's net new business within your existing account base that you've now secured that account 100%. No one's coming in. No one's going to have to be able to offer anything that you can't now, and you're going to pick up all A3s, all A4s between Derek's sales processes, Clover's support at a high level, NSC support, again, cradle to grave, anything you need to manage and win that NPS business, call us. We'll help you. Once you win the business, what asset can NSC be to you? Well, as we talked about earlier, and AJ mentioned, it's the hardware side of the business. When you're involved in MPS and you're looking at that total environment, one of the first things that's going to stand out to you is the fact 
They probably have more print capacity than they really need. So how do we help those customers take that current hardware investment to end of life and backfill it with what they truly need in order to streamline their organization and for you to be more profitable? And we help manage all of that data. We look at the data on a monthly basis on each one of the deals that you bring to us. And we'll tell you, hey, you've got six high volume devices that are in low volume areas. Maybe we ought to move those around. Or you got devices that are extremely low volume that maybe we should just pull those out and have people printing to these other devices that are within a reasonable walking distance from where they're sitting. So there's a lot of data that goes into it. We are very, very good on the analytics side of the business. So we can help you by giving you the analytics that you need to go out and do quarterly business reviews, talk to your customers about what's going really well, what's not going as good as it can be, and help you create customers for life. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Bill. And then on the uh, next slide, I'll take it um, in terms of how is Clover going to help all the dealers on this call be more profitable, have ha better engagement, and work a little bit more effectively in an MPS environment and, and in, with an MPS sales strategy. And, and what I want everybody from a Clover standpoint to take away from this call is that our partnership with you as a dealer does not end as soon as you receive our toner cartridge. We want to help you guys be more successful out in the field. Your success is how we grow our business because we don't sell directly to end users. We want to help you guys with all of our infrastructure so you can be successful out in the field. So you have to think about it. You've got not only your dealership, but you've got Clover at your back whenever you're going out and engaging customers. And that starts with having a dedicated sales rep. All of you should have a rep that's internal at Clover that is compensated on the dealer, your dealership success. That rep should be very versed in the inner workings of your organization and they know Clover very well. Therefore, they can run point for you. If you've got questions, there's things that you're getting frustrated with or you're having a hard time with. They've got a multitude of customers nationwide and they've been working with that they can draw on that knowledge base and help you guys out. But most importantly is all of the reps that are at Clover have um, history and experience going out on end user calls and doing ride alongs, sales calls with you to help you guys kind of take those training wheels off specifically if they've got questions about the cartridge, questions about the process, anything like that, we're here to help. Furthermore, we can help with, you know, Derek does the training on the process of MPS, but once um, your reps are comfortable with that, we want to make sure that they're also comfortable with selling a remanufactured cartridge and positioning our cartridges and our product in the right way. There's so many excuses or so many reasons that people don't want to use reman and they may have used it in the past, whatever it may be. And we want to make sure that your reps are right there with a response to any of the objections they may see. And then also we've got training that's associated with our green and sustainability uh, messaging to help your reps be a little bit more confident in selling into environments that may have sustainability metrics that they're looking to hit. A lot of companies right now are looking at ways to get become carbon neutral. Everybody wants to be more green right now. We're seeing a massive amount of success utilizing um, an eco-friendly message to win new business. And we want to make sure that you guys understand the, uh, the, the industry and understand the value proposition that a Clover cartridge brings. We can also spiff your sales reps. We've got a lot of dealers who've taken advantage of this where Clover will actually work with you and your sales leadership to put together a program that best um, uh, that your, their, your reps can get excited about, get them um, a little bit more cash in their pocket to get them started on selling MPS so they can see the benefits of, uh, of selling a program like that. And we, we can work with you to see what works best and give you some examples of what we've done in the past. But that has been extremely successful for us out in the field. And then additionally, we want to help you with ac the actual pr proposal that you're putting in place in front of your customers, whether it be through hardware support. We've talked about the fact that most of you don't really need to be replacing an entire fleet right now. But if you go in and take over um, an environment and there's two or three old machines out there, they're still running HP 5SIs or something crazy like that. We want to be able to support you guys with best, both new and refurbished hardware that you can place into those environments. And we'll help you craft that deal to make sure that your proposal and your profitability are, are high and you've got a differentiated proposal. 
So we'll look at certain cartridges. We can tweak pricing, make sure that you guys are competitive. There's been situations where a machine placement, a couple of machines we've given at a discounted rate in order to capture the supply costs or the supplies over the course of two or three years. We want to work side by side with you and partner up on those deals, big or small, to make sure that you guys have the best proposal when you're pre presenting to your customer. And then last and not, but not least, our marketing team has done a fantastic job of developing marketing and collateral that you guys can all custom brand for your specific dealership with your logos, for your reps to use as lead behinds, educational pieces, whatever it may be. We want to work with you on that side as well. So um, very truncated way of saying that after you guys get involved with Clover and you're a partner of ours, we don't want to just be a vendor for toner cartridges. We want to be an extension of your sales team. We want to be um, working with you to help facilitate your growth um, out in the field because that's the way Clover is going to win and Clover is going to grow. So it's selfish and it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it should be in support of your dealerships as well. So um, that's kind of what the value proposition for Clover is. And the next slide is, is really the, uh, the wrap up point. And you can see all of our uh, shining faces here. What I would um, suggest anybody on this call to do, and we'll go into a Q&A because I do see there's questions, but you can see our contact information below. Derek, myself, Bill, we're all very, very excited about working with each and every one of you on the call. Anybody that's got questions, concerns, thoughts, anything that we can do to help make you guys more successful or uh, clear up any, any questions that you may have, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd all be more than happy to, uh, to help um, where we can. Um, but with that, we can turn it over to the Q&A. And, and um, Tim, I would love if, uh, if you would uh, dig up some questions that maybe we can answer. You got it. I uh, appreciate the questions that have been submitted from the field. Um, I'll do my best to assign these to the presenter that um, had uh, content that is along the lines of these questions. And the first one, um, I'm going to send over to Derek. Derek, the question is, are successful MPS dealers rewriting contracts due to print volume changes and um, constrained hardware availability? Yeah, I saw that one. And I was actually thinking that that would be a good one for Bill because um, he's probably had, he's got a lot of those contracts set up himself. And I imagine, I, I'm curious about how he's dealt with them because mine are more about getting people to get new these newer deals. And so um, I think that, that's more for people that have these deal, these contracts going right now. I pass that. I pass this one off to Bill. Thanks, Derek. Uh, Tim, repeat the question for me, if you would, please. Yeah, of course. It's our successful MPS dealers rewriting contracts due to print volume changes and uh, difficulty sourcing hardware. So it's a yes and no answer. Unfortunately, um, we are able to rewrite deals. Uh, we do have supply chain issues, as you all well know. But it's, uh, it's a positive and it's a huge opportunity. And the reason for that is another advantage of our partnership with Clover is we have access to remanufactured A3 and A4 devices. So if we have supply chain issues, we go back in, recommend an A4 remanufactured replacement that meets the criteria for however they're printing. And here's what that does for the customer. It reduces their hardware uh, expense by about 50% versus uh, the acquisition cost is reduced by about 50%. Those cartridges are going to come with a remanufactured Clover cartridge day one versus you guys know today, if you put in a brand new HP A4 device, you could be 12 to 18 months before you have a remanufactured cartridge for it. So we're reducing your acquisition cost. We're also reducing your supply cost day one. And this is where NSC really works closely with the dealer channel to give you the advantages that you need to go into your customers and really help reduce the total cost of ownership. And I am giving you a long answer, but I want to give you a really quick example. We have a large healthcare account. They put the business out for uh, to a consultant about a year and a half ago. They're in Missouri, Wisconsin, and Oklahoma, and they were focused on the cost per page or cost per image rate. They needed a reduction in that rate. And uh, we took a different strategy. We looked at all of their hardware, what we could do from a hardware perspective, from a refresh perspective, and all of those things. And we wound up presenting them with a five and a half million dollar reoccurring savings by letting us manage the hardware, replacing their current HP fleet with remanufactured HP devices using remanufactured toner from Clover. Uh, we obviously won the deal because 
our uh, approach and strategy was much stronger than the other people that were involved. And the nice thing is from a customer perspective, there's zero risk. Because if you're under one of our managed print programs, we're responsible for the device, we're responsible for service, maintenance, everything involved with it. So you get 100% of the savings with 0% of the risk. Awesome, thank you, Bill. And then I'm actually gonna keep uh, this next question, I'm gonna keep with you, Bill. Um, you mentioned the um, investments required for a dealership to start up an MPS program. Um, and this question may be a little bit difficult to answer, but um, how much of a, a monthly cost on average would you say it costs a dealer to have their own MPS, uh, their MPS division? So it's, it is a difficult question to ask because I'm not sure, um, you know, are you going to, you want accounting, do you want uh, customer care people? Uh, if you're going to start your own MPS, you're probably looking at uh, to successfully do it a minimum of two to three FTEs. So uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars to make that happen. Um, one of the nice things is you can get in the MPS business today without investing one dime in that infrastructure because NSC and Clover already have the infrastructure for you. So you're going to give up a little bit of margin because we're going to get a little bit of that CPI rate to support everything for you. Um, but it's a fraction of what it would cost to put this infrastructure in place in your own organization. Plus, again, the other big key factor in that is we have the experts on staff our director of operations has been here 12 years. Most of our customer care team, uh, two of them been here since 2006. We just added two new people. So we've got some newbies out there, but we have the knowledge base and the infrastructure in place already. So you can let NSC help you get to a point where it makes sense for your business to invest in that infrastructure. And when it makes sense is when you already have recurring revenue, you have the contracts in place and you don't have the risk of putting the infrastructure in place before the deals. You're gonna put the infrastructure in place after the deals are already here. Awesome, thank you, Bill. Our next question, I'm going to send over to AJ, because uh, AJ had uh, spoken to the support that Clover can offer um, our dealers and their reps. How can Clover get um, uh, SPIF uh, reps to close MPS deals with Reman Toner? So we've done it a couple of different ways uh, in the past. Uh, one of the things that we ran recently that I feel like has been probably the most successful is we can spiff reps um, for the first few months after uh, getting started with an MPS program on just bringing deals to the table and then um, get to get that churn started. And then over time, uh, we can add, add additional spiff dollars in for deals that are closed with um, Clover uh, product and and we can vary in terms of how much we put out there. But um, an example we've used recently is we've spiffed reps twenty five dollars per proposal that gets put in place, and an additional one hundred, one hundred fifty, even two hundred dollars in certain cases for a deal to get closed based on the size of the deal. Um, and and that has gotten a lot of reps kind of excited. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but if you think about it, just to get the data proposed and get the data out to a customer. 25 bucks, your rep should be going in and pulling every account that they've got data collection on that you guys are monitoring environments on and just putting it together for easy money. So the idea is to get them excited and started for it, on it and, um, and uh, give them some incentive to actually do the small amount of work that it takes to get a proposal um, out the door. Um, and so it just depends on the dealership too. We can sit down and talk to you and your sales leaders and come up with something that works best. But I guess the, uh, the, the message should be is that we want to invest in the growth of your organization on this side. And so we'll put money out there to make it um, exciting for the reps. Awesome. Thank you, AJ. Our next question I'm going to um, assign to Derek. Derek, uh, the question is, does a successful MPS dealer need to have a role dedicated to crafting and managing MPS proposals? Well, part of the workshop, um, there's there's obviously a lot to the situation, but part of the workshop is to is designed to help your salespeople sell to, in, in my words, 99 out of 100 places that they're walking into every single day. I mean, you know this too. So if you're, you're on this call and you're listening to this, you go out in the field to your salespeople and you walk into accounts and you say, wow, these all look like, what are we doing about that that, that, that printer right there? How, are, how Why aren't we capture, capturing all this stuff onto the contract? Those deals are every account we walk into. One out of a hundred are the ones that are the big traditional accounts that 
uh, you need to have a full process around that's that's detailed and, and structured and and um, and uh, you know outlined from start to finish. You know the sales process for that. But for every account you're walking into, these things don't need to be um, uh, this big confusing thing to do. And and so for those situations, the pricing can be a lot faster. And for us, that was one of our uh, our ways at our dealership. Um, of of selling deals faster, and that's by having a, a a generalized pricing that you can use quickly for the rep. But at the same time, knowing that if you're walking into a a large large opportunity out there that you look at and you say, oh, this is your traditional MPS size account, then you know that you need to follow the normal process for that, and then um and have pricing being done by someone that knows how to do that. So to answer the question, if it's a large 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 account. Probably the account that you're normally thinking about it as an MPS account, then you might need someone doing the proposal there for that because it's just complex. And it's got to be if you want to win against FlexPrint and the other big monster companies out there that do this really well. But for every other account, 99 out of the 100 places that your people are walking into every single day that you walk into every single day that you could have walked into today, no, you could do this thing fast. The pricing could be easy. And it shouldn't require much effort whatsoever. As you can see from the results from the workshops that I've been doing, people are getting deals in minutes. They're getting deals in a day. And uh, and that doesn't require all this drama around proposals. So I, I would recommend you start off getting those deals. And then as you run into more and more of these bigger opportunities, then you can start looking at getting a specialist um, that'll handle the larger, longer uh, detailed processes to handle that. But there's no reason why you couldn't start right now. Awesome. Thank you, Derek. And I'm actually going to keep it with you for this next one. Yeah. Um, is the modern sales training um, including or included as, a, or I'm sorry, is the modern sales training program, um, the workshops, is it part of the uh, Clover package or is it something that should be, uh, dealers should be coordinating directly with you? Yeah. So, so uh, basically my engagement with, uh, with each dealer is, is going to be the same regardless. Um, you would need to talk to your Clover, your Clover rep, just to see, um, you know, you're, you're standing within Clover to see what Clover would be willing to do from a sponsorship standpoint for the workshop. So, um, so I would check with your, with your, uh, your representative, your Clover representative, and then talk to them and say, Hey, we're, we're looking, we're interested in doing this workshop or at least exploring it. What, what would uh, Clover be willing to, to do with us for this workshop? And then you might find that, um, that uh, Clover would be going all in with you. Or, uh, or Clover would say, you know, the, the ROI is going to be there probably after a few days anyway. So you're good. But, um, but yeah, so you can come to me and then I'll send you back to Clover and then we you know, come back to me. So with some dealers in the past, they've said, Derek, I'm interested. Let's talk. And then I talk and then I'll send a message to AJ and I'll say, AJ, what's up with these guys? And they'll say, oh, these guys are great. You know, we want to support them. And then, and then I'll, then I'll recommend to the dealer to contact their rep just to make sure that that's tightened up and then we schedule a date for the workshop. Awesome. Thank you, Derek. Um, and this one, um, we had a couple questions uh, regarding the size of the deal and what minimums would be for that. Um, so I'm going to leave this to whoever wants to take it, Derek, AJ, or Bill. Um, is there a minimum deal size that makes sense for MPS um, or minimum supply levels uh, that you would recommend before adding a device to a contract? Yeah, let me go first and then I'll pass it over to Bill. So you know, part of part of your sales reps getting used to selling this, and and I'm gonna speak directly from the down the street sales leader side. You know, because I was out there running the sales teams, getting our people to sell it, and and these guys. Part of making this easier for your teams is you've got to remove all of the yeah, but ah, wait, ah, don't do this unless this happens, or don't do this unless that happens. And they walk in these accounts and they go, look, you know what? I see a Rico right there. I could just ask them when that thing expires and I know what I can sell and upgrade it. Like that's easy. But then they go, well, I got to sell MPS. And they go, shoot, well, well, what, what brands are there and what's, you know, how many do they have and uh, what, what levels are they at and all these sort of things. They're just going to be like, it's just a hassle. I'm just going to go and, and do the, the A3 device. And so, um, so I would offer up for consideration for you guys out there is these questions that, that, that you're asking by, by nature, there are questions that came from the old traditional sales model for MPS, which is it's got to look like this in order for it to be an MPS opportunity. 
And I would change that for you to say, look, if those guys were paying you per click for their devices, wouldn't you make money? You would. So obviously the more they're printing, the more money you'd make. And so I, I, would, I would offer up, have the sales reps bring these deals to you. And then you say, you know what? This isn't enough for us to take it on, but hey, good job. I like you getting into the swing of things. You know, it's not, it's going to be more of an exception to the rule. You're going to find way more that are doing it than else. But um, the short answer is this. It doesn't matter about units. What matters is volume. When we're talking about normal accounts, the volume, what are they doing per month? And can that, if you're capturing that volume per month, what's the amount of money you'd make off of it? So I change your mindset on that. What's the volume they're doing in the account? Okay, Bill. I couldn't agree more. Uh, as I said earlier, no nobody should be the square peg in the round hole, right? And to Derek's point, once you start gaining momentum with MPS, it's not just this guy only has five devices. This guy has five. The guy two door down has five. This guy has 15. This guy has 25. And the next thing you know, you've got 30 devices under contract. And what is it? It's reoccurring revenue, right? So don't think too small. Don't think too big. Let's just go out there and sell it. Let's secure those accounts for your dealership, for your sales reps, and then we can keep moving forward. Uh, the other half of that question, I think, was on the fit for service side. What are the volumes from that perspective? Our contracts, any consumable supply, whether it's fuser, uh, toner, whatever, 25%. So if it's below 25%, it has to be replaced before it's eligible for the program from when we do our fit for service evaluation. But again, kind of going back to Derek's point, don't let that be a hurdle or a roadblock because 80% of those printers that are sitting at 25% or less probably already have a toner cartridge sitting on the shelf that the customer doesn't have to buy. They already did. All they have to do is pop it in the machine. It's program eligible now and boom, we're ready to roll. So thank you. And uh, the next question, Bill, I'm actually going to keep with you. Um, there's, I'm going to combine two questions that are regarding the service um, of the hardware themselves. Um, the first of which is, since many A4 printers are, for lack of a better term, disposable when a service issue occurs, um, how, does the, how does the replacing of, of hardware um, work financially within an MPS framework? And what would you do, or how do you approach deals where an end user has a mix of laser printers and inkjet printers? So inkjets, uh, typically, as we all know, you can't get a page count. So we're not going to put inkjets on the program. We typically handle those in a transactional environment. That's pretty straightforward and clean from that perspective. Uh, on the lower cost A4 devices, um, typically we put them on the program. And if they need a maintenance kit, it's worthwhile to put a maintenance kit in. Uh, and it's kind of funny because we're seeing a, a shift right now in the market Uh a few years ago, we had customers that, hey, once it needed a $1,200 part, forget it, we're replacing the device. Well, now with supply chain issues, we can get fusers, we can't get printers. So now we're seeing a lot more service than we were in the past just because of the supply chain issues. But one of the things we do in our programs and we'll do for, for the dealers as well, is we look at service by device every single month. And when we send you your reports at the end of the month, we're gonna highlight problem areas so if we've got a printer that we've serviced four times in the last six weeks, we're going to call it out. We're going to say, hey, we might need to look at replacing this because it's obviously causing disruption for your customer's business. And it's a pain in the butt when every time you turn around, the printer's not working. Um, we don't just use a last in first out method that works most of the time, but these are mechanical devices and you're going to have scenarios where, hey, you may only have a few hundred thousand pages on this machine, but we just can't get it to work right. We're going to replace that one where we've got another one with 800,000 cycle count. It's still working great. We're going to keep it in the fleet and we're going to keep pushing it forward till it becomes into life. Hey, Tim, can I, can I add something in here? Of course. Yeah, real, real quick, you know, this, the idea of uh, local printers and, and, and ink jets and such have come up, obviously come up quite a bit. And when I meet with dealers, it's something we talk about and we use FM audit. You know, so we used we used FM audit. We started with Print Fleet, but we went to FM audit because that's what Global Imaging Systems was using. So we wanted to be on the same platform. But I've run into some dealers this year that have gone in, gone all in on uh, MPS Monitor, and we never used MPS Monitor. And it, I think it's a relatively new product, and it it was there after our senior team disbanded. Um, but uh, but I would check it out because there's a there's a dealer that um, I I work with. 
in Texas that uses it. And uh, they say that one of the, one of the um, uh, uh, advantages of, F of MPS monitors, they figured out how to read local printers, uh, local devices. Um, and I'm obviously I haven't seen it. I can't say, I can, can't say I've ever tested it out, but uh, they, they closed a, a 2000 unit MPS um, contract uh, live right there is a $42,000 a month MPS contract on a call when I was on with them. And they said that they, I said, how long did it take it? How many printer printers were there? They said, oh, there's 2,500 desktop printers and locals all, all across the nation. And I said, how long did that walkthrough take? And they, and they said, we didn't do one. We can use that MPS monitor to get all this data. And I was just like, come on, man, that's not true. And he's like, no, seriously. And anyway, I never knew about it, but I would just, if I were you guys, I'd look into it just to explore uh, just to see if it's even true, because if it is, we might be at the days where it could be even easier to sell MPS. And there's no, the local devices might be uh, something of the past and maybe FM audit and, and e-automate, they just got a little, you know, they got a little uh, lazy with their innovation. Uh, I don't know, but check it out because I uh, think people are still innovating. Awesome. Thank you, Derek. And I do see that we've hit our a lot of time. So um, I apologize if we didn't get to your question. Uh, they came in faster than we could answer them. But any unanswered questions remaining in the Q&A section, we will be following up with uh, with um, with you individually. Uh, your sales rep here from Clover will be uh, getting that information, following up with you. Uh, but I would like to once again thank Bill, Derek, AJ for coordinating this time today. And on behalf of myself and Clover, um, thank all of our attendees for spending an hour with us, and we hope you found it informative. Um, as a reminder, the Clover marketing team will make the recording of this uh, presentation available to anyone who joined late, left early, or was unable to attend. Um, once again, thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.